Hey everybody. Well, I defy you to tell me that this is not an awesome airplane. <laughs> this is the de Havilland Tiger Moth from Ants Airplanes, A-N-T, P-S, Ants Airplanes. And I mean, this thing is just such a classic and they did such an awesome job on it. It really is incredible. Even the co-pilot up front there, and you'll get a better look at him. And um, now I can tell that my sim is working a lot better than it did before. And how can I tell is because doing stuff like that actually triggers my fear of heights. And that doesn't happen very often in this game. But when it's moving by really smoothly and I'm looking up like that, it does actually trigger it. So that's a good indication for me, actually. Not a great litmus test maybe across the board, but for me, it tells me that it's moving and performing much better because it's only in those situations that I actually get nervous. <laughs> well, not nervous, but I, I feel the a little bit of it popping up. <laughs> Anyhow, so like I said, this is the de Havilland Tiger Moth, and it is from Ants Airplane. So this is the Tiger Moth. This is the first plane ever produced by Ants Airplanes. And it was produced quite some time ago because it was originally for Flight Sim 10 and then Prepare 3D. So it was around a long time now. Um, and they've re-updated -up it completely for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Now, one of the really awesome things is you can get a full featured payware version, which is what I have right here. And they also will provide limited feature freeware versions that you can download and test it out. So the freeware version, um, it doesn't have a lot of restrictions. The customizations like the animations and so forth aren't all available. The pilot passenger model will always be a bit visible. Uh, you can't click to change the airspeeds and the altimeters, which I can right now. You can switch between gauges, knots, miles per hour, and old style gauges and so forth. Um, there's no engine wear, oil consumption, or damage modeling, and you only get two repaints. But it gives you a chance to really test it out. Again, I didn't. I just went straight for the payware version. <laughs> the Tiger Moth first flew in 1931. Almost 9,000 of them were produced. They were the primary military trainer for many nations leading up to and during World War II. A lot of them went into private ownership after the war. And even now today, they estimate about 650 earworthy Tiger Moths still flying around. Uh, it's considered one of the most famous biplanes ever built. So since I'm on a biplane kick and since the sim is doing so nicely, I thought I would revisit my barnstorming that I done in the past on this bridge. And I'll do it with this aircraft and uh, some of the other ones, the big radials, New Newport 17 I have. And of course, I'll take out my Fokker DR1 triplane, the Red Baron's beautiful triplane, which is always fun because that's the only one that's got working machine guns. <laughs> so, um, and then I think there's a couple of others. So, since we're in a biplane mode, I figured I would do a little zooming around the bridge. Man, I can't get over how nicely this is performing and how well this looks. Between DX12, DLSS and new sim update and the graphics driver. This really is looking quite nice and performing, I think, quite well. It's funny, outside it seems to be a little bit more stuttery than when I'm actually in the cockpit. So I like to stay in the cockpit anyway. Once you're out of the cockpit, it kind of, you, you lose the realism. And I only do it for the videos. If I'm actually flying for flying. I almost never, ever go to the outside of my airplane because can't really do that in real life. And so 
I always clock pit fly, but sometimes I like to challenge myself and like this, I might try and do an outside view as we're going down the middle here. Um, I don't know, I think on that particular, this bridge, if you hit the wires, I don't think they do damage, but if you hit the main supports, then they definitely do. Uh, but there's a pretty good view of it here, so. Yeah, fantastic plane. Just Flight, you can purchase it from Just Flight. You can get it Sim Market. Uh, you can buy it direct from the site. It's $19.95 from Just Flight. I think it's $18.25 if you do it direct, but I don't think you can do that from for every country. I'm not really sure. You'll have to look on the website, but it's antsairplanes.com. This is the Tiger Moth pro version they have a freeware version that you can download or a demo version i should say a limited feature um they have a glider a big two passenger glider which i haven't tried out yet uh, uh not a glider i'm sorry an ultralight it's an ultralight and that one i believe is actually in the sim marketplace the this one is not but i believe that their ultralight is in the in-game marketplace Anyhow, check it out. I think if you like biplanes and like classic planes, you know, killed the magnetos. That's where the magneto switches are, outside of the cockpits. There's two here and then two up front. That's the way you kill the engine. You can't kill it with the mixture like modern airplanes. Uh, the mixture itself is actually reversed, so you do just the opposite. You pull it out for rich and push it in for lean. And there's a gate on the throttle to prevent you from pushing the mixture past the throttle, which is kind of a neat feature. No brakes, no brakes on these airplanes. They weren't before and they aren't now. However, Microsoft Flight Sim does allow the brakes to work. So it's up to you. If you want to be more realistic, you can unmap the your rudder pedals for the toe brakes. Then you've got to stop like this. No brakes, you just got to land someplace. Believe me, if you land on pavement, it better be a long, long airport cause it, runway because this thing rolls and rolls. So I'm up on the wing right now, and here's the co-pilot. And I like it pretty good. I, I like the skull cap and the jacket. I actually have some of those. My, although my skull cap's a little bit different than his. Um, but I have a jacket very similar to that. So we're going to take the all the engine covers off, and we're going to get up here, and we're going to take a look at the engine. And now you'll notice, as I have my guy move the throttle here, that the linkage actually moves. Let me, uh, i got to pull it through first, and then we'll let it start up. Maybe one more time. Come on. Kick. Kick in. Let's go. Yeah, yeah there we go. Okay. Now watch as he moves the throttle here, and you'll see all the linkage actually moving inside the engine. Uh, I mean, look, they take the time to put a label on the motor. I mean, that's so awesome, isn't it? So yeah, so you can see see all the linkage moving here inside. It's really, I mean, you don't have to do that, right? I mean, it's all covered up and you're flying anyways, but look at this, isn't that awesome? So let's, uh, I bet you've never seen a flight like this. And I'm not going to go far this way, I can tell you that, because I can't really see a whole lot of what I'm flying around here right now. So, <laughs> let's, but pretty cool. Hey, so check it out. The Haviland Tiger Moth, just an awesome, awesome, historical, classic biplane. A uh, lot of history in this beauty. Great manual comes with it. And, uh, yeah, look at this. Look at the detailing here now. Look at the Gypsy Major... Uh, label for the engine. Wow, beautiful. Hey, thanks for watching. See you in the skies.